Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning February 17th, 2020. Now let's just dive right in. Done my meditation. I know what needs to come through and the word for this week is connection. Okay, so <laughs> what do we mean by connection? First of all, Archangel Metatron and Archangel Sandalfin are going to be probably a pretty big presence for a lot of you out there. Uh, you know that there are some people like, you know, angel mediums and channelers and all of that. A lot of them are bringing through those energies because we're talking about the imprint of the universe. We're talking about being more connected to Gaia and we're talking about sacred geometry. We're talking about ascension. We're talking about our indigo aspect. We're talking about our third eye, right? So I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why Raphael didn't come in. <laughs> <laughs> Archangel Raphael is saying we'll get there. And of course, you can always work with Archangel Raphael if that's what you choose to do. But this is about raising the consciousness of the planet. This is not a new idea, but it is time for us to find connection with one another. So working with these archangels will help you do that. Archangel Sandalfin helps you balance the, you know, the spiritual self with the physical self, with your physical body, the language. Yes, he's saying... I will help balance the language of your physical body. It's right here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so help you balance the language of your physical body. And so what that means is you will have an awareness that will spark for you. Okay, so there could have been an issue going on for you physically for a very long time, but you gave it a million excuses Oh, it's just age or any of you who deal with weight issues, uh, you know, no doctor really addresses what the real root cause of the weight issue is. Um, you know, they, sometimes they tend to stay on the shallow sort of judgmental answer of uh, it's just eat less, exercise more, which don't try me. <laughs> I feel Sanfon has like a hand on me here. So like, you know, it, but what we're saying here is that you might have had these issues for a long time or joint issues or what have you. And when you're working on raising your frequency, it's, yeah, am I getting the feeling here that you have this spontaneous healing? Because there's a learning process that has to happen first. So the illnesses that you might be experiencing, the aches, the pains, this is actually teaching you in a weird way to be sort of telepathic with your own body. <laughs> Can I put it that way? Uh, to learn the language of your body and what it is actually trying to tell you. So weight gain with fatigue, might you might wanna look down the road of adrenal fatigue and check with an expert on that. Are you having thyroid issues, right? Which we, the endocrine system is absolutely under attack, okay? It's absolutely under attack with what, we, what we're bringing into this world. And, you know, certain technologies are being channeled into the minds of humans and programmed into the minds of humans. And yet we aren't quite ready for it. Yes. So our bodies are not reacting well to some of this. And then people who want to do more natural living, let's say, they'll go out and say, well, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that. This is going to cure all of that. And that's all well and good, and that probably worked in the past, but the information that's ready to come forward right now has to do with working on the frequency, right? To get the body prepped, to handle what's coming in, and to handle what we need to do with it, to handle the lessons that come along with that, okay? So if you learn to tune into your body and not just explain away what's happening and not get mad at your doctor too for not knowing your doctor's not going to know probably not I don't know maybe <laughs> but this is about you saying no I I want to take this further no I want to have more maybe it's more testing or maybe I don't know you all take care of your health in the way that you see is right for you but this has to do again you're learning that lesson of communication and connection we're going somewhere with this. So learning that communication and connection with the physical self, yes. Bringing that spirituality and anchoring it in the physical. Bringing that light force forward. 
There's a reason why I put it that way. It's a little creative, right? <laughs> a little sci-fi. But people will get awakened by that, right? If I say the light force, the light code, what code? Code seems mysterious, doesn't it? Code gets your attention. Doesn't matter what it's really called, right? It, it's just as long as you understand, right? We're just going to use those kinds of words. So this, that's what a real awakening is. It's, yes, it could be higher consciousness, um, you know, like the mind kind of waking up, but it's also the body waking up. It's the heart waking up. It's every cell opening up and receiving light, remembering its own light and saying, oh yeah, I know how to do this. It's not about escaping the physical. It's about integrating. And when we start to bring that light through us in a real way, take your time with it, <laughs> right? We're all going to be in a different place. We start to raise our frequency. The light expands. It touches the light of others. And now the light is starting to gather. The true tribe is all of the other billions of people who think that we are actually powerless. That's finding your tribe. Finding your tribe comes through the light communication. And you can't have light communication unless you remember it within yourself and open it up, right? And so uh, even out today, we finally had a break in the weather, <laughs> right? And I went outside to get some fresh air to see that beautiful blue sky we have here in Colorado Springs take in the mountains, the snow on the mountains, just spectacular, just spectacular. So I'm taking it in and I started to do that as well because I got the message. Yeah, I got the message. I'm going to try this. <laughs> right? So I've been working on that and I actually felt my light start connecting and I could see almost this huge range view of this planet and that I'm connecting with people on the other side of the planet and they can feel me. And I can feel them because I could feel the love coming back to me. No, that's not wishful thinking. You know how I know that? Because I didn't go, oh, wouldn't it be so nice if I could feel the love of someone on the other? I know I do. I felt it through my entire being. This wave came over me. And I felt at home. I felt at peace. But I didn't relax. I wouldn't say I relaxed into that necessarily. It actually got me very aware and awake and focused. And I just allowed the experience to unfold. And I was supposed to bring that. I was supposed to experience that and bring that forward to you guys. So any of you who are seeing this video, you're meant to see it. You know that. Uh, please make sure that you are giving this information to other people. I don't really care about looking popular. <laughs> right? YouTube for me is not about that. It's not about being popular. It's about getting whatever message I can bring through out to whoever needs to hear it. Yes. Of course, I like to pay my bills. <laughs> but like, as most people, I don't want to get sucked into this system. I'd like to be free from this system as, as soon as possible. Um, and unfortunately, money is the way that that still is happening. So uh, working on my energy to be free of that now too. But if you take that message in and if you're asking well, how do I go about that? There's earth. We have to remember earth and we have to connect in some way. Okay. So I honestly think do whatever you want. I'm sure others will have more ideas, but go outside, go outside and don't go, well, Michelle, you're lucky. You're right next to the Rockies. You can just go out and look at all that. <laughs> really beautiful mountain scenery and all that. It doesn't have to be. I have as much appreciation for the beauty of my hometown in Ohio as I do for the, the beauty I have here, the beauty I had when I lived in Los Angeles and could easily drive to the ocean. New York, eh, that was very man-made kind of beauty. Um, but we had Forest Park. I believe it's called Forest Park. I would walk there all the time. And it made me feel like I was coming back into myself. So getting out into nature is going to be imperative. 
and doing exactly what you hear in a lot of meditations. So you'll hear, um, you know, take the roots out of your feet, <laughs> right? And go down to the heart of Gaia, which is uh, thought to be a crystal. Uh, some people say it's made of iron, but uh, whatever she's made of, let's connect to her, okay? Archangel Sandalfin is, I don't wanna say in charge of, that's a very human way of putting it, but uh, he helps us with the earth star chakra that's underneath your feet. Okay, so that if you connect with that chakra and you connect into the heart of Gaia, don't try to force an experience, just allow whatever's happening. Because a lot of times the experience of awakening and remembering, there's no way to describe it. There's no story to put around it. As a matter of fact, the story ruins it. The story starts to put it in a box and limits it. So if you release any pressure or need to do that and you just breathe through the experience breath is everything slow that breath down do that breath work five in you can do there's many patterns that you can do but five in hold for five ten out if you can do that or five in five out again it's whatever you're feeling like you can do to really get the whole body in a flow yes and then of course we bring the light from above down through us and it mixes in your heart space. This happened to me when I was out and I started doing that. And there was a spinning, right? There's the heart chakra, which spins, we know that. But then I imagined and saw that it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's not necessarily my, I don't think it was my heart chakra that was getting really big and wide. I don't have words for it. I don't know how to tell you this. Um, I just knew it was necessary. <laughs> whatever was happening I just flowed with it I knew I was being guided not just by angels and archangels but of light beings coming through and saying are you still afraid of us <laughs> because for years I would push the light beings away and say no uh, you know all of the dogmas ever taught me is that I can only listen to angels that's it <laughs> nobody else and yet there's so much love out there and so much intelligence and so I can't explain to you exactly what this thing was, but it was, it started my heart chakra and it was sort of spinning around like a, like a big hurricane and it was green and it just kept getting better, bigger. And then I went through my body and it started expanding more. And then it felt like it was getting into my community and then my city and the state, the country, the continent, the world. And I left it there. I left it there. It's still spinning. It's still spinning. And I started to remember how to make things be. And I started to connect. And I've been sharing this in personal readings with people where we're going to be asked a lot of people who carry light. Not that we're any better than anybody else. We all have our things. Okay. I was just eating a burrito back in December on <laughs> camera. Talk about not being in touch with your body, okay? Anyway, so we're getting called to different kinds of purpose, okay? So, yeah, you can define yourself as whatever. I'm a YouTuber, spiritual practitioner, angel medium, whatever, whatever. You're going to be asked to do something else. And it's, as I was saying, it's the carriers of light who are going to be given this. And I also started to say, please don't get on your high horse. You're not helping anybody. If you go, I have a mission. I know my mission is to. No. Stop. You're filtering into the ego, to the shadow aspect. The ego is there by design. Right? It's what we're equipped with but you're not gonna be hooked into it. Your, your, your energy and your focus needs to go towards whatever you're being asked to do. And I can pretty much guarantee it's gonna fall under one of the categories of, for me, it's gonna be helping children. For you, maybe it's helping the homeless, uh, helping the earth, cleaning up the earth, animals, connection without ego. And we are going to be laughed at. People are going to go, yeah, 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 yeah. 
No one's going to listen to us at first. And you'll be tempted to shout. Do not. That will not get anybody to hear you. You must be pure in your own energy. You hear me say this all the time. That means you need to work on yourself. And the egos are going to flare up. Michelle, when are you going to work on yourself? Watch the, the dark energies. I think we were talking before how people, you know, they, they get traumatized. And then they shut off their empathy. And then it's like someone, someone just really shrunk down their soul. So they could be filled up with junk, right? And be running on that junk. And then we have these almost, um, I, I want to be careful with the words I put around this, but we have these sort of animated, I don't know, there's no word. Um, they're animated on fear. And so they go around biting at people just to diminish. This, they're showing me that this might fold us into a little more of a dichotomous nature, but it's not us against them. It's not us against them. It's standing back as witness and realizing when we're getting pulled, right? And still have compassion for that person. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to, oh, I'm going to have a rough time with that. You guys know my history with abuse, but we need to find it. We need to embody it without martyrdom. We need to carry forward without victimhood. And we have work to do. But here's the beautiful part of this. Connection. We get to be connected with one another in a way that maybe we have forgotten, in a way that actually is pure. We've forgotten ourselves. And when we wake up, you might see it as waking up from a bad dream, a programming. Or we can just sort of see it as like snapping out of it and saying, oh, this is my truest nature. This is what I'm made of. Well, I got this. Okay. Now, in those missions that will be given... It's not just, oh, I'm going to go join this organization and help clean up the oceans. Again, this has been coming up so much in personal readings. So much. If you do want to connect with me in that way, that, that all that information is down below if you want, you know, to, to connect one-on-one -on -one like that. I, please read the website. I always have to say this, but <laughs> please read the website and everything before you sign up. But, um, but we can, I can tune into your energy and look at that. Um, but it's going to be asking of us to do the frequency work, if I can put it that way. Um, that means the holding the space, the getting into a meditative space and saying children and innocence will be invisible to predators. Children and innocence will be invisible to predators. And so it is. And feeling that, or maybe, maybe the mission you feel suddenly come to, and you'll know, you'll know, it'll be kind of like a wash, a wave over you. The oceans are clean now. The animals are safe now. The children are safe now. And if that ego comes in and says, no, look at it, plastic everywhere. No, look at what these people are doing. Don't. The children are safe now. Why? Because I said it. Are you going to say it? The animals are safe now. That's the frequency work. That's the waking up. That's remembering yourself. That's remembering your power. Let's pull some cards. So this week, I couldn't decide which deck to use 
we love pretty things, right? That's why we use Oracle decks. <laughs> so I'm going to use a few. So this might be a little bit of an extended reading. I'm using the crystal deck. I'm going to use the color deck. I'll get a color card as we do every week. And then uh, the Magdalene Oracle. Oh, they, oh, here you go. Black Obsidian in the Shadow. Check that out. This is what we're finally coming to understand. And those of us who for years, especially in our spiritual practices, maybe have been, we work on our own shadow. But what about the shadow we've collectively cast over this earth? What about that one? Things happen because we allow them. Ooh, the sting of accountability. How dare you? I know. Doesn't mean you get to run away from it just because it's uncomfortable. We will be turning around and facing the shadow and realizing that we've let a beast chase us and we could have stopped it by realizing it doesn't really exist. What, Michelle, this is so dumb. Of course, light and dark exist together. I'm talking about the manifestations of the shadow. We have the power to stop what we don't like to see. We are the caretakers. And we need to remember to wake up because we've been sleeping on the job. You don't like thinking about animals getting tortured? Is that a fact? Okay. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to go vegan. And then I'm going to beat up on farmers so that all farmers pay the price for what a few have done. Nice job. You overcorrected. Go back. All of the animals are safe. The animals live out the existence they are meant to, whether I can understand it or not. The animals are safe. The animals are fulfilling whatever duty they have. Face it. Face what's going on. One of the biggest atrocities that we have in this world would be people and how they speak to children. So on one end, we have people being so harsh, verbally abusive, threatening. If you don't stop crying, I'm going to give you something to cry about. What generation are you from? Comment down below. Who's heard that before? I'll slap you into next Tuesday, right? What a weird, stupid thing to say to a child. If you're like that, ask yourself why and stop. It's time to clean it up. That's your shadow aspect. And you might be like, oh, I hear this all the time. Oh, that's how my father spoke to me. Let's unpack that. Okay. You think you're honoring your father by behaving in that way? That's the legacy? That's what you want to pass on? No. Stop. The children especially being born in now, they're, <laughs> they're already so much in that high frequency. Watch how we talk to the kids. Watch how you talk to your animals, your pets. I watched somebody go to their dog and scream at the top of his lungs at his dog. And everybody was just like, well, he's got to train the dog. That dog was having trauma experiences and shaking and, you know, like cowering under this person. Terrified. Terrorizing this animal into obedience. Got to train the dog. Stop it. Let's pick another card. Cooperite Rites of Passage. Come on out of the darkness. Wake up. This signifies a tough time. Not just this week. You guys know that the messages, it's just uh, the, the message is ready to be heard within, within this week. It's going to carry on. 
the rites of passage card says that you we've been through a testing time and now it's time to show what we can do and if we fail at this that's it <laughs> do you get it do you get it do you know how often i have come across people who i can sense they're so beautiful and so loving and yet they act in such a self-centered way that it harms another. We're so conditioned. I talk about these conditions. I have in other videos. And you know what people do? They laugh and they say, you're ridiculous. You're overthinking things. You're taking this too seriously. You're too sensitive. The rites of passage card is really saying, time to come on out of that. Let's move through it, okay? Master Teacher Card, Divine Temple Source. I really wish I was able to find the show. I was watching a show. There was a spiritual practitioner on there, and she said, we are the divine dreaming. And uh, it was an interview with Regina Meredith. Please comment down below. I just thought of this example. If I knew I was going <laughs> to, if I would have remembered to share that with you, I would have looked up who said it. But, um, you know, I, I just thought that that was so beautiful, right? Like, we are the divine dreaming. And we've heard this. We're, we're the individual in these bodies, right? Like some expression of source, source energy. So are you going to remember that? Are you going to embrace it? Not in a way that makes you an egotistical mess. I don't know about y'all. I can't do it anymore. I'm spiritual. I practice. I know everything about the chakras. I know how to... Uh. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> do you think I was gone? Here I am. <laughs> but what I'm getting at here is that we... that No, 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 no. Dead weight. Move. If you're not going to help, get out of the way. At least be quiet. Go sit down. Thanks. Or relax. Okay, so we have calcite <laughs> relaxation. So this is actually uh, not just, I think, maybe it is them having a good sense of humor about how I need to relax on what I was just saying. Um, but also, I think this is reminding us that pushing yourself isn't going to do it. Actually, we get so programmed to push and push and push until we are completely spent. I was having a day yesterday, and I was pushing, 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 and then I suddenly, I just... Like, I, not like I was going to pass out, but I would sit down, started feeling dizzy, not well, <laughs> right? Um, and I started going, let me look into that whole adrenal fatigue stuff. Let me, let me see. But we do, we get so programmed to think that we have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And the way of manifesting is by controlling and contriving, manipulating. Stop it. You're going to relax. <laughs> Oh, she has spoken. <laughs> but you have to relax and get into that brain wavelength that's actually going to be of use and, and helpful. Get into your hearts, connect into your hearts, and ask the universe, ask source, how may I serve? It's not about our individual stories anymore. This is what you're here for. But there it is. Okay, so let's get the Magdalene. Let's get some Divine Feminine energy here Gaia <laughs> Archangel Sandalfin helping you connect to Gaia you can also work with Archangel Ariel but I'm feeling uh, Sandalfin in here much more prominently uh, and that's probably because of the, yeah, because guys, it's kind of that as above, so below kind of thing. Because Metatron is very much about the Ascension, the Akashic Records, you know, sacred geometry, your intuition. And Sandalfin is about grounding. He's known as the Archangel of Music. Did I say that? Hi. He's known as the Archangel of Music to uh, sort of help you attune your frequencies through sound healing. Again, music frequencies, all that good stuff. Uh, but to help with, as I said before, the spiritual aspect with the physical and connecting to Gaia. 
your earth star chakra. Okay. Mother Mary. Mother Mary. Yes. So there's this nurturance here, this mother, this mothering kind of feeling. And what it is, is we're kind of mothering not only ourselves and our own inner child. That's important. I know people love to roll their eyes over that. You need to hear me. Time to reparent your inner child. And if you're one of the people that rolled your eyes, you're probably also one of those people that would laugh at somebody who's enjoying themselves or who feels really healthy and beautiful and vital one day. And you just have to say something to drag them down because you don't feel good about you because you hurt in your body. And you think if you spew that hurt outside of you, if you disrespect somebody that's going to be helpful, you just want to drag everybody down with you. Guess what? You belong with all of us. We are you. You are us. Why not try a little joy in your life? Reparent your inner child. And we need to realize that we are everybody's mother. We are everyone's father. We are the divine masculine, the, the divine feminine. We are source. We are here to connect. Connection. We need to look out for one another. That's what this card is saying. And it's all about compassion. So there's that. Okay, so we have sacred sexuality. This is very interesting because if you're an astrologer, I'd love to hear your take on the, uh, the Pluto and Scorpio generation. I know, <laughs> hi, if you do any online dating, you've come across them. Uh, there's not a real want for connection. Um, I know, I'm gonna, that's not, stop, stop. There's a lot of throwing sexual energy around in a very uh, sort of undirected kind of way. And it doesn't foster connection. Yeah, you guys need to hear this. Listen, I'm, I'm like full-blown Scorpio over here. You can't get more Scorpio than me, <laughs> I don't think. But this transformation through everything that Scorpio represents. This would be people, I think, from about age 25 to age 37. Scorpio and Pluto. Uh, or Scorpio and Pluto. Pluto and Scorpio. Hi. What did I say before? Anyway, Pluto and Scorpio. <laughs> people, be careful how you're using your sexual energy. That is your sacred life force manifestation energy. And if you toss it around, or if you get talking to, listen, I'm not saying don't be sex positive. I, I am 100% sex positive, but it's all about the intention. And some people miss that part. The sacred part here, the sacred sexuality card says that you need to honor that energy. Doesn't mean you're a prude. Doesn't mean... <laughs> You can express in poly situations, you can express, you know, however you want, the same sex, hetero, like what, whatever works for you, that's fine. It's your intention. They're saying that when you throw that energy around, now you're unplugging and you will, it has this feeling of getting worn down and kind of falling out of love with a life. So I wonder if there isn't some other uh, signifier, if maybe that generation, I don't know if you are of that generation, comment down below how you feel about that. Um, do you, you might not know what I'm talking about and that's okay. <laughs> you might not know what I'm talking about at all um, because you don't experience that. That's not a part of your reality because our environment does inform our choices quite a bit. So if you grew up like highly religious, I doubt you'd be watching this video, but if you grew up, grew up highly religious, you know, you might have had a very different approach. You might think it's terrible for people to explore. You may not like the whole idea of sex positivity, right? Um, yeah, people trying to be forward thinking and calling themselves sex positive just because they're willing to do anything, that's not sex positivity. Stop it. Ooh, this feels called stop it. <laughs> anyway. No, but it, it's, it's a, I don't want to say it's a waste of energy, but 
it's literally like you are just draining your life force. Now, if you have some good intentions behind that, whatever your intentions are, again, that's different. Yes, it's not about the actual action. It's not about even who you have that action with. It's about connection and not purposely trying to destroy connections. This would be the fleeing part of that. That would be the part of not honoring your partner or partners, whatever, whatever your situation is, whatever you're exploring right now. If you do not honor the energy inside of another, you're harming yourself, number one. But you're also missing one of the most beautiful parts of being human. I, in my work, get exposed to a lot of different kinds of people. And that's what I love about my, my work, exploring what this world holds, you know. <laughs> and so often I have people come to me absolutely depleted. They're terrified of their own hearts because emotions equal bad. I'm not looking for anything serious. I just want casual. Don't contact me if you're looking for emotions. I don't do emotions. Guys, I'm not saying that's the whole generation of the Pluto and Scorpio. I'm not saying that. <laughs> don't come for me. But, you know, when, when, you, when we start to unplug from a capacity to connect, that's abusing the gift we were given. I'm going to say it again. It's abusing the gift we were given. It's Mama Scorpio over here. Go ahead and talk to me about this. I'll talk all day. <laughs> it's my profession, okay? But be careful with how you are directing that energy, all right? It doesn't mean that you should be ashamed, right? Because I know there are people out there who are having their experiences and just, you know, seeing how their chemistry works and how does that chemistry work with another person. That's not bad. So long as you are still respectful of what has just happened. Yes. We could talk all day about this. I could do a whole video on that. Careful guys. So it's not just that generation either. It's, it's the, everybody else kind of getting programmed to be afraid of your heart. The heart is bad. Emotions are bad. I don't know about this. I think he has feelings for me. Well, is he crazy? Is, is he going to hurt you? No, he's like one of those like really good guys, but I, uh, uh, Michelle, I'm going to get a reading from you. Why can't I meet my soulmate? First of all, don't come in with soulmate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Long running joke with me <laughs> on this channel. Gratitude. Gratitude. Have gratitude for the people that come into your world. Especially, you know, being, here, let me get this other card, uh, being connected in with this card. Have gratitude for the souls that are coming to have an experience with you. Have gratitude for this life force. Have gratitude for what is. Stop looking at what you perceive as wrong, okay, and start having gratitude for the fact that you've manifested a lot of things thus far. So look back over your timeline. You manifested everything. What works for you? What doesn't? Accountability? Did you just ask me to take account? I hate this video. Oh, no, you love this video. You love this video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Frequency work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't get all into that negative space because you're, you're being, you know, called to face it. Today's the day. Today's the day. Get into this energy right here, this gratitude. Now, I do want to share with y'all that on the bottom of the deck was this little children card, okay? We need to be more sensitive with children. We need to step up, do that frequency work to help the children. Do you know how many kids, especially weirdly here in Colorado, who go missing? We can change that. 
You want to fight me on it? We can change that. I'm trying. Are you? Get on board. Get on board. And this goes in with the Mother Mary card here as well. Pray for every child every night and not in a begging way. God, please, I beg of you, please help the poor children. Oh, those poor, 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 pitiful children. Say with me now, stop it. Thank you, God, for sending my energy and your energy to every child in this world and for every child who believes that there's no one who loves them. Let them feel and know within them that I do. Let them know that somewhere in the world they have a mother, even if they lost their own. Let them know that somewhere in the world someone is thinking of them because they matter. Their future matters. They are supported. Put that in your prayer. Oh, I don't pray at night. What are you doing? Sleeping? <laughs> Get a prayer practice. Don't beg. Don't think of people with pity. Send that light out. Send that love out. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. Just start with working on that heart center and you'll get the message. You'll get the message. Fear not. We got a color card. We got a color card. Y'all ready? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So funny. I sat down and I was like, oh, it feels like this is going to be like a, maybe a quickie little video. Nope. You never know. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. You have no enemies. You have no enemies. But that Brittany girl who stands by the copier and hogs the copier, you have no enemies. You have no enemies. The world is filled with family. The world is filled with family. The world is filled with family. Honor and love one another. What? <laughs> what you saying to me? Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. So those were sticking out. We have blue, activate your healing power and sapphire, regenerate your body. The number is 38 and then blue is uh, 37. So here, look at these two cards and they stuck out together. This one's very cosmic looking. This one is like very fractal. <laughs> That's what I want to say. It's like very fractal. Uh, and we were talking about regenerating your body and anchoring your, your spiritual energy, what we call it right now, spiritual energy into your physical body. And then you're activating your healing power. But this isn't so that you look really cool and look really po <laughs> popular and powerful. Okay. Do the work. Don't just want to look like a good reader. Help people. Don't just look like a healer. Heal people. And if no one ever witnesses you doing that and you get upset, you have some thinking to do. You need to reconsider. Getting in touch with the cosmos and maybe even cosmic, what we would call cosmic beings being real generic here because like all kinds of people are watching this. So mm, they're showing the light here, the connection, connection here, there, it's all around us and connecting to source. It's all about connection. So we'll leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for spending your time with me. I send you my love, even if you feel like no one cares about you, no one loves you. I do. And there are plenty of people out there who actually still absolutely love you. <laughs> right? So we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.